Lamborghini around this time of year. And y'all be trying to use and abuse me with the company cars, but tomorrow we're going to pick up the Ferraris and we're going to be... Hold on, Reggie, we live? Yeah, man, we live. All right, um, thank you so much. Hand me those papers over there. Oh my God, da da do. Somebody please say it ain't so. With Keefe D being arrested, there's a lot of information that's fuming over to the people that's in the know about what's going on in Hollywood. I'm talking about people are starting to connect the dots to some key players that was a part of the East Coast, West Coast beef and nobody ever knew why this beef took place in the first place. But you figure in hip hop, there's famine. When one side is making money, the other side ain't making no money. When the East Coast was popping off, the West Coast wasn't popping off. So to stop this famine, they had to create beef so everybody can eat. But the beef got out of hand when Tupac Shakur was acting like a damn tyrant. They had to get rid of him. He was bad for business. People can shoot subliminal shots at each other for 50 years and people can speculate and allegate on who they talking about. Like the Isley brothers taking shots at the temptations. Nobody knew that they actually had beef, but people would assume they wanted that for hip hop. Build an economy off of beef to where everybody can eat and everybody live happily ever after while behind the scenes, everybody's friends and everybody's buddies, Biggie, Beefing with Tupac ruined everything. Diddy was okay with beefing with Dr. Dre. Where y'all think they get verses from? Timberland was okay with having a quote unquote beef with Pharrell. That's what keep the records flowing. You gotta pick a side. And if you don't wanna pick a side, you gotta buy both albums. Dr. Dre put himself in a situation to where the greatest gangster rapper that ever lived Call him a Smurf in a Schmofo. Tupac told the world that Dr. Dre was taking it up the butt. And that put a damper on his whole career, man. Not only did he lose death row, he needed for the company to implode. He needed for death row to be destroyed because if it lived, his career would have been over with accusations like that made by Tupac Shakur. Nobody was going to be bumping his new album and he was in a desperate situation. After Death Row's demise, Dr. Dre came back on the scene with Aftermath Records. One of the most sinister albums ever created Had a song called East Coast, West Coast Killers shitting on the world choices got me open all these songs with subliminal messages taking direct shots at Tupac and Suge Knight if it wasn't for the implosion the destruction of death row records there would be no aftermath for Dr. Dre and people never connected the dots if anybody had interest in Tupac Shakur being out of the picture, it was a lot of people sitting at that round table. Y'all got to remember, people like Russell Simmons and all these big wigs that have been running the game for a long time had a good interest in creating this beef economy. The South wasn't even in the picture yet. They was, but they was a non-factor because everybody from the South sound like they was from the West. So it was a tirade against the East Coast. It was all supposed to be fun and games. Until people's sexual orientation started to be put on blast. And I believe that's the main reason why Tupac had to go. You could say what you want to say about somebody's mama. You could talk about their dad real bad if that's what you want to do. But as soon as you start saying sexual things about people, especially back in those days, you had to go. Keefe D is providing so much information that it's spilling over into the cyber web. 
Now everybody can make allegations and speculations and I just so happen to be one of them. And that's why I need y'all to do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button. I got so much love for y'all. This news I'm about to be sharing with y'all is about to be crazy. So I need y'all to show me that love because right now I'm about to give y'all some of that love back in return, man. Let's see who we got up in here real quick. Oh man, yo Reg, get that set up real nice because I ain't going to be able to do the show without showing them that proper love, man. Word up. We got people in the comment section already. So glad that y'all here. Mizell Sanders, Celtic Tiger, Will Jones, Jasmine W, this guy TM. We got Miss Boo Boo up in here. And you can't forget about 12. Gage Gore, we back, bro. Who else? Jesse is also here. Tracy came through and showed me some love. Will Jones, lovely Jesse. El Petrino. This guy, TM. We got the whole All Stars list up in here, man. So let's just go ahead and get back into this news, man. Y'all got to listen at this, and I need y'all to listen at this hard. Okay, here we go. Reg, run it. Get it right there. Okay, listen, listen at this, y'all. Y'all got to listen. Uh, Valentino giving me shoes, gang. We cannot stay in the same place. You cannot have the videos with the girls shaking their ass in the 40s. You know, that's, we've been there. That's over. It's time to move on to something else. This year in, in hip-hop, um, we, we saw a, another tragedy, another loss with the death of Tupac. What was your reaction when you heard about his death? I mean, that was like a um, terrible loss because he was a very talented person, you know. Um, one of the most talented people I've worked with, you know, in the studio. He was real, real fast in the studio and knew exactly what he wanted. You know, he was a good producer. Also, a good actor. You know, you, don't, you can't find that. You know, you can't find somebody that can really, really rhyme, get in the studio and get down, and also, also be a good actor. You know, that's rare. You know, so that was a great loss to the entertainment business. What about you personally? You know, they, th this is the thing about it, man. They had to blow Death Row Records apart because it was causing so much damage. And this was in an age where information wasn't available to the public. So Tupac went and gave information, inside detail information that nobody's supposed to know about and spewed it to the public, man. When you say stuff like that about Dr. Dre, you fucking up money for NWA, Ice Cube, everybody affiliated with him. The record labels, people don't want to listen to the music. Tupac said some things that led to his demise, man. And y'all got to hear exactly what I'm talking about. Listen, I don't have anything about, you know, against gay people or nothing. It's just, I can respect the person who's gay who come out and say they's gay. Right. Then you got who's your gay? choice. But the other guys, A lot of the rappers are gay and they don't admit it. Yeah, 95% of them is closet cases. Right. Come on, 95%? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't say 95% because I don't know all of, all of them. I He's got the a lot of... I know the ones who's on our label was like that. Isn't Name it true? Names. <laughs> Yo, this is Suge Knight talking. Keep that in mind. Oh, don't, don't, don't name names. <laughs> and then this recently, Dre went to Mount P.O., and tried to get me violent, and he snitched on me. I haven't even seen the guy since I've been home. You're but on probation. I'm on parole, baby. Parole. <laughs> parole. So I don't know so the language. Any, <laughs> anyway, he went to my PO. How many record company executives you know are on parole? And, and Most and of them should be, and but. The thing about it, he went to my he went to my PO, and they and they made a special case in my parole conditions by saying that he put a, basically put a constraint order against me. Who did this? Dre Andre. And mm -hmm. the only thing. Only, only people I know you put a constraint order to get somebody unless it's a battered woman, like a wife, a baby mama. I didn't know a so-called gangster rapper would go put a constraint order against another man. Right. It's very because I know the way. That now, what did Dre do that made him want to put a restraining order on Suge Knight, man? What made it so bad to where he felt like his life would be in danger if he came across Suge Knight? He was close with Snoop and still is close with Snoop. And I'm pretty sure when Tupac got to the record label, if anybody was salty, it had to be Snoop Dogg. He was the star. Dr. Dre was producing for him nonstop. Tupac came in there and messed up their flow. 
And eventually, Tupac lost his life and Dr. Dre went on, created a record label. It flopped at first because people were still caught up in the Tupac situation. People wasn't even rocking with him like that after Tupac died because it still had that sting on it. And if it wasn't for Eminem coming into the picture, he would have really, really fell off, man. But the Aftermath record label is a clear result that he had to escape the building before it exploded, man. People don't understand this man is a mastermind that been orchestrating things before Tupac even really became famous. This is an eerie picture if you really think about it, man. Both of these dudes talked about Dr. Dre's sexuality really, really bad. And neither one of these dudes is still living to say nothing else about Dre. Easy called them all types of wanksters and pranksters and told him that he could suck his doggy stick. The way Tupac did him was so vicious and foul to where Tupac had to get taken out the game within months. Matter of fact, within weeks after saying what he said about this man. And now we all know that he's at billionaire status. Him and Diddy still besties when they was the main men pulling the strings behind the scenes. People know about Diddy's dirt, but nobody ever stopped to think about Dr. Dre's involvement in all of this. If Easy went out like that, and then Tupac went out like that as well, it's a possibility that these men got secrets. And if you're not trying to keep those secrets, man, this some old Masonic shit. And seeing how they were so young, it lets you know somebody in power got to them early. Maybe it was Jerry Heller that put them onto the game. The story goes, listen y'all, the story goes, Easy e was the man with the money. Dr. Dre had the production and Ice Cube had the rhymes. Yellow is Dr. Dre's flunky. MC Ren is one of Easy es henchmen. They all came together to create this group to put black people in a negative light and they made a lot of money in the process. But as long as they ain't put their personal business out there in the street, the show can go on forever. It's no telling what Ice Cube been to and what he like to do behind closed doors. He got too much of an image that people believe is true. Dr. Dre, on the other hand, is supposed to be a gangster. Even though they got pictures of him with lipstick on with the two live crew or whatever the name of his group was, man. And for Tupac Shakur to be a ballerina and get involved in gangster rap goes to show that all of these men must have something in common. The zest is inevitable. Oh my goodness. And you got Diddy in the midst of this brother love. When Dr. Dre first met Tupac, he had on a kufi, hanging with a dude with a big, big nose that liked to do the Humpty dance. Tupac was on his way back to the motherland, but decided to stay so he can get involved with gangster rap. And that ain't even the cold part, y'all. It's only gonna get deeper. It's too many allegations because Keefe D says some things that drove them detectives wild. The relationship between Diddy, Dr. Dre, Suge Knight, and all the other key players involved is all zesty in Tupac. Being up on the Suge Knight the way he was up on the Suge Knight. 
goes to show that these men that y'all be praising as gangster and all this other bullshit is on another level when it comes to being zesty, man. Y'all got to listen to this. Is that why you're saying he's gay? <laughs> Let I'm me... saying he's gay because there's a guy named Bruce. And they've been sleeping together for years. Oh. And we had a meeting. We just had these meetings in a red room, right? And once we had these meetings, you had to put everything on the table. Everybody had some drinks and wouldn't nobody lie. Because if anybody get caught lying, it was always a consequence. Right. So Tupac stood up and said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Dre, use a faggot. Dre said, first of all, right. I'm not a faggot. He said, okay, well, then you're a homosexual. He said, I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> These I'm meetings, bisexual. These meetings are so something else. So he said, you bisexual. He said, see, that's another thing I don't want to do. I don't want to be doing songs with a guy who's uh, pounding other guys in the butt. <laughs> then, the, then Dre said, Pac, I thought you were smart. You're still dumb. If I want to pound some butt, I could do a woman. I'm a... I'm a bisexual because I like to get my cheekbones blue. I like to get pounded in the butt. Oh my! Well, let me just what say. Me? Let me let me say something. Now, even though they taking them shots at Dr. Dre, people fail to think about how zesty Suge Knight sound telling these stories, man. You gotta ask yourself some questions, and I'm about to help you ask those questions for yourself. I'm not gonna ask it for you, man. I'm just going to lead you in the right direction so you could really think this over. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about it, man. Why was Danny Boy Suge Knight's right hand man? I never seen Suge toting around some bad bitches. But he had Tupac on one arm and Danny Boy on the other. And it ain't nothing wrong with that. You figure, you know, if they some gangsters, they some gangsters. But Danny Boy is all the way out the closet now. But back then he was wearing Suge Knight's clothes to his damn photo shoots. Talking about slip and slide. He ain't just get zesty. They want to make it seem like Danny Boy woke up one day and said, whoo, I'm about to be flaming. Man, he was zesty back then when he was with Tupac, Suge Knight, and the whole death row. He was one of the homies. And they held him down. Diddy was one of the homies. Hold on, wait a minute. Switch that up, man. Oh my God, man. The same way Suge Knight had Danny Boy, Diddy had Fonsworth Bentley. So this is a, a standard that's going on in hip hop and been going on in hip hop. So whenever you see a rapper and they got a right hand man's in them, you got to question they right hand man's. Look at this, man. People never wonder why Busta Rhymes always with this dude spliff star they show up to the red carpet they wearing their pinks together whatever busted dude spliff gonna do it too that's his man's that's his man's when y'all gonna wake allegedly is y'all feeling me on this? Am I taking this too far, man? Y'all y'all gonna have to let me know. Is y'all in the building? Somebody let me know if y'all can hear me out there, man. Because Dr. Dre and Diddy got a lot to be worried about. Because if y'all the masterminds behind the East Coast, West Coast beef, and now people starting to see y'all for who y'all is and what y'all did, they tried to do it like the NBA, East versus West. And when Tupac went to the West, 
that was like Kobe getting traded to the Lakers or something like that. Or Shaq getting traded to Miami. When you had rappers switching sides and joining other coast, they was trying to do it like basketball. But like I said, Tupac took the acting a little too far. And he started to believe the shit that they had him doing. He basically went crazy and they had to get him out of the picture. He started going in on Ice Cube in the West Side Connection because they was trying to keep the, the feud going so everybody can get paid. They figured, hell, people getting money off of being from the East and the West Coast. How about we get some money off of being from the East and the West Side? It's going to be some bloodshed, but hell, we at the top of the food chain. Hold up. Yo, man, I appreciate y'all for watching. Y'all got to listen at this, though. Reg, get it together. Okay, listen. What was Tupac's issue with LL Cool J? We seen LL, though, right, right at the last... Like the week before Pot died, he we, we seen him. He was like, like he he was like, you know what I mean? We was at the MTV Awards, and Suge and Pac. I remember walking in, and Suge and Pac and him was sitting somewhere, and I was like, "Where's my seat?" And they was like, "You got to sit over there." And LL was just like, he was he was paying attention to everybody who was walking with us, and he was respectful. He spoke to everybody. He was respectful. He spoke to Pac and Suge. You know what I mean? So I really don't know the. I, I really can't recall why why Pac. Um, start doing songs against LL, but um, like I said, a lot of times the East Coast rappers were doing, they were saying subliminal stuff in their raps. See, but that's the thing about it, man. They need for Tupac to take shots at LL, especially when his career was struggling. Like, damn, how can I f get myself out of this bind? How can I get out of this hole? Nobody's buying my music. I'm a has been. I'm still licking my lips. I'm still taking my shirt off. I'm still trying to be sexy. You figure back then, if Tupac throw you a bone, you can run with that shit. You back relevant again. This is before social media. I think that Tupac was trying to do LL a favor for real. And he was trying to do a lot of people favors by mentioning their names. Because if it wasn't going through him, a lot of them dudes was in his shadow. He probably had love for Mob Deep and just wanted to see them get some shine. And the same thing with Nas. When they met each other, there wasn't even no beef. They're like, look, man, you a hot rapper. I'm doing my thing. You doing your thing. I said your name so you can get a check, young man. And him beefing with Biggie was probably his way of getting Biggie to blow up bigger. They was friends. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, Big ain't never do me wrong. I know he ain't shoot me. But if I said he did, then he gonna have a good career. The problem came in the picture when them Crips got up on his ass. And with this newfound information, allegedly from Keefe D, it was some key players in hip hop that had a good interest to get Tupac out of the picture, including Sir Suge Knight, man. Tupac was about to do a deal with Quincy Jones after making zesty allegations about Dr. Dre. And it was only a matter of time before Tupac came completely out. Do y'all think if Tupac was still alive today, he probably would have been at the parade with Zaya Wade. He probably would be married to Dwayne Wade. And no disrespect to Tupac, but I'm saying, I would, I could definitely see a coming out party. Like I want to tell all my fans that I've been holding it down for a long time. But today, baby, it ain't thug life no more, mama. He pulled his shirt up. It might say young thug life or something on there. But that's Negro here no there. Hey, go ahead, play play the clip. You know what I mean? And I think even in that who shot you, he might have came out of iced tea. 
he might have said some slick stuff against Ice-T. Pac is just like that, man. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it had nothing to do with Kadada Jones, right? Nah, it, it wasn't nothing against Kadada Jones because, of course, we know I... Hold on, wait a minute. Hold, wait a this bitch. Hold, hold, wait, wait, hold, 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 hold up, man. Damn. Hold, wait, cut that. Wait, hold up, bruh. She not a bad looking chick, but actually she do got that Jada Pinkett thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And LL was smashing her too. So Quincy Jones's daughter is a, a pass around. That's how he get people to sign deals. He do the, the father in love, the father in love scheme on people. Hold on. Hell, hell. He'll put you, put his daughter on you in a minute. Like, so you don't want me. I got something around here. You like, I know it's, it's something around here that you like young man. If it ain't me, it's something you gotta, you gotta give daddy some sugar too. Yo, LL looking like he did some sneaky booty tricks. He looking like his innocence has been took. He got that look on his face like he willing to do it again. And Quincy Jones stepping over him like this is my man. Any other you young boys want a record deal? Show me what you got. Oh, you do a little sing and dance. I used to do a little sing and dance. LL looking like I do more than sing and dance. Do a little hip hop, a little rap, whatever you want, whatever you got, I'm gonna do it. Oh, I know, I know I didn't just see what I thought I just saw. What, hold on, what the? Is she about to braid his hair? Why is he sitting between her lap like that? Y'all see that? Something is, is off about this, man. You got Steve Stout flaming. Hold on, this, this gonna seal the deal. Hold on, if, if this, wait, wait, this gonna do it, man. Hold up. He's sicking bitches on people. They hugged up rubbing on each other. Hold on, no. This is gonna seal the deal. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's, it's over, it's over, it's over. I found the Hobbit. It's him. It's him. Uh, it gotta be him. Man, they, Pharrell is worshiping Snoop Dogg on the red carpet. You got Dr. Dre, Nas, and Quincy Jones having in. He even got to Kendrick Lamar and put him in a blouse. Like, young man, what'd you do? You grab the ass. First of all, you grab the ass. And then that's when you start asking questions because it's go time when you get right there. As soon as you grab the ass, that's when you ask, do you want this contract or no? Allegedly. Hey, look, man, I had Will Smith. I had Tracy Morgan, Michael Jackson, Tito Jackson, Jermaine Jackson. Kendrick Lamar looking like you had all of them. Like, yeah, I was young, man. I, I get booty. I had that nigga bang, bang, bang. He doing his um, freaking John Witherspoon impersonations, man.
I don't come home without giving me no sugar now. Quincy motherfucking Jones. Ray Charles ain't know who hands was on his ass. Or Stevie Wonder. Hold on, he wasn't blind. He dapped him up the Crip style. Yo, this a whole nother Doc's Daily, man. Okay, we gotta get back on task, man. Cause like I said, I be all over the place sometimes. I do apologize. I wanna thank everybody out there listening. We got a lot of information that we gonna be getting into. Oh, this chick is a sloop. First, Michael Jordan was gripping all on her booty at the All-Star game. Now she all laid back with Quincy Jones. Not only is he got his hand all over her, he got his he all over her. Then he leaned back on the couch with her and grabbed her hand and put her hand in his pants. They treat her like she's garbage. And on the same night, she laid up on the couch with Dr. Dre, Olive, and Quincy Jones. How hold, hold on, wait a minute, y'all. See, once you start connecting the dots, you start to see what's really going on. One minute she hugged up with Dr. Dre. Then the next minute she all over Diddy. Yo, y'all see how they be passing people back and forth. First Tupac was with Diddy. Next thing you know, Tupac is on the west side with Dr. Dre. This ain't the first time some shit like this ever happened. They've been passing people back and forth for decades. And this is going to explain it all. Reg, I need you to get that set up, man. Get it set up ASAP. Because they need to hear this, man. Where is the clip? God, he lost the freaking clip, man. Yo, get the clip back. He lost it. Y'all stay tuned, man, because I'm about to pull it up for y'all real quick. God, it's right here. That ain't I don't have any. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna have to type it in manually. Y'all hold on real quick. I do apologize. <sighs> okay, here we go. Y'all need to hear this, man. And while Diddy never revealed why he didn't sign the game, based on no, what the game that ain't said, what I drink challenge. God, man. What is going on tonight? I'm looking for one clip. Y'all gotta stay tuned. It ain't there. Shit. What I'm looking for is the clip where the rapper, the game says that he was with Diddy for like six years before one day Diddy told him, even if you do have a history with Dre, how that he need to be with Dr. Dre, man. Even if you do have now, a history, what the with fuck Dre? is going on tonight? Reg, I need you to get this together, bro. Hold on. Zoom it out and see if it'll pop up. God, it ain't going to pop up. I ain't going to stop until I get this clip. Wait a minute. It just ain't on there, man. I don't know why they hating on me like that. Okay, drink. Okay, I'm blowing it. Drink. Jams. If it ain't here, man, I'm just going to move on. I don't see it, man. But y'all know what I'm talking about. The people out there that keep up with this type of stuff, man. So basically, Dr. Dre and Diddy been passing people back and forth for decades. And now it's a bunch of rappers out here that want to be like these people, but not understanding that these are the bourgeoisie people that created this whole rap industry. And they always been friends. But they got together and all agreed like they do with everything else about Tupac. It's nothing that took place in hip hop in the 90s that both parties didn't agree on. Hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm going to prove it to you so you know what I'm talking about.
I think I got it. Okay. Damn, where is it? <sighs> Basically, Farrakhan had a meeting with all of the rappers and brought them together after Tupac and Biggie died. And everybody showed up to the meeting, man. And it makes you wonder, how come they couldn't do this before Biggie and Tupac died? Why they had to wait until the aftermath to finally come together and try to get an understanding? That's because they know the image that was already painted is already generating billions of dollars. And it was a heist of a lifetime for people already solidified in hip hop. They showed up to get this medal of honors for surviving the East Coast and West Coast drama. They feel like they veterans in the game. I survived the Big and Tupac murders. I survived the East Coast and West Coast beef. I'm certified. I was in the trenches with Biggie and Tupac. Now that they did and the war is supposed to be over, they come in to collect the spoils of the war, man. And this ain't no knock towards Farrakhan because he always been a good brother, but damn. They feasting and eating off of the demise of these men when they could have got together when they were still alive. How come he don't tell them to quit rapping that bullshit? He get on a pulpit every Sunday and condemn the masses and tell you about how you ain't living right, how you need to eat right. How come he ain't tell Rick Ross to quit putting out that BS? That was the perfect time to talk to that young man. He, he more fly than Rick Ross. Ross like, shit, I need to step my game up. Huh? Like, I'll show you a real baller, young man. He could have told the game to, to get them tattoos off your face and change your life. Why he ain't convert them to Islam? You got all the knuckleheads in your presence. Now is the time to preach. They got they chains dripping all on your face and you ain't he got an upside down cross on his head and you ain't tell him that was blasphemous to the nation. He looked like he not pleased at all. He smelling like weed. He like, I wish I could have me a gram. How you gonna be honorable with a nigga named Two Chains? He's oh like, look, I got two pennies and I got this ring and I got another one. They call me Two Rings. Like, all to rob your old ass. DMX and Taraji P. Henson with the great minister. He ain't tell her to quit making them ugly faces in the movies and he ain't try to get the dog off crack. Rest in peace to DMX. Y'all ain't put him in no, no rehab. Fruits and berries and juices, herbs, natural eating and living for the black man. The nigga that started NWA, they was protecting his ass at the height of his career, man. Protecting Ice Cube. When rappers want to do a concert and they worried about them street niggas, they just hire the nation of Islam. They'll let you get up there and preach your evil sermon to the people. As long as you paying a bag. Yo, and this is by no means, no, I don't want no beef with the honorable minister Farrakhan, but we talking about the Tupac and Biggie murders and y'all to stand next to F 
50 cent. What up, blood? What up, cuz? What up, gangsta? People that wasn't even in gangs were shooting and killing each other over this nigga. You bump into somebody with that mean old two step, you might lose your life. Like, I'm so tired of paying these niggas. Everywhere I go, I gotta put my money in their pocket. They can see the me or the police, and they'll pop you in the back before I will. Hold on. Oh, no, he didn't. Did he really just. Did he, he embracing Young Thug, y'all. Oh, he, em, he embraced him. Like my young zesty brother, keep doing what it is that you do. Keep moaning and growling on them songs. The devil done a good job with you, young man. I can see it in your eyes. The devil got you hooked. I'm here to save you. I ain't gonna let you go back home. You gotta come live with me for at least a month to get off them drugs. I doubt. If that was the conversation, man, I feel like an ass for speaking on the, such an honorable man. Look, I'm not talking about the brother no more. Don't you know they made the black man believe that he was a baby? That's what they've done to you, brother. You, you think you're a baby boy. Now you got all these other rappers want to be babies. Got the little baby, the baby. Even got a rapper out there call himself Grown Baby. Oh it's because of you, brother, because you've refused to grow up. And what's this talk about you kissing another rapper on the mouth? You say you're his daddy, but are you his mother? I want to reach and teach to you, brother. I have to save you because you're destroying my people. I doubt if that... I got to delete this video on them when I'm done. I don't want to. He had T.I. T.I. looking like something stank. Ugh. He looked like something stank too. <laughs> he looking like something stank too. Looking like, what the fuck is that smell? <laughs> T.I. looking like, mmm. Like something is rotten. And he looking like, yeah, I did it, and. Smell your shit for 32 years and you can't smell mine for five seconds. T.I. broke down crying like, you ain't never heard nobody fart it. And man, I ain't never had it creep up on me like that. Well, shit, I'm from the old school, man. Yo, get, get him off the screen, bro. Get him off the screen, man. Is y'all still there? Because I'm tripping. We ain't even. <laughs> we got to talk about Tupac. <laughs> Hold on, man. <laughs> Y'all still there? Twelve in the building. What it do? <laughs> Kasova and Damon George. <laughs> Lord Lee Bowens is here, man. Neil Taylor, Demarcus Ferguson, and everybody else, man. Music Depot. <laughs> Gage Gore, what it do, man? Oh, man, we got to get back into this news. She Poo is here. And Jetty Nine. Good looking 100 reacts. Law Rose. Yo, it's going down tonight in that chat. That's all I know. Okay, let's let's get back into this news, man, because it's a bunch of stuff I want to share with y'all. Let's let's get back into it. Um, shout out to the honorable minister. No disrespect. I love the minister and the nation of Islam, man. So I'm just doing jokes that I shouldn't be doing. But whoo, man, let's <laughs> let's get back into this real quick. Y'all need to hear this. California love video. Dr. Dre, Tupac, Chris Tucker. Getting busy. Oh, Chris Tucker in the house. Video by Hype Williams. What's that? Yeah. Y'all see this shit? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at Tupac face. Look at Chris Tucker's perm. Let me just go ahead and type this in real quick. <clears throat> Dude.
do y'all remember this when Chris Tucker did that movie and he was flaming out of this world, man? They put extra brow. He was glossy. He had a wig with a, a, a coochie in his damn hair. Like just in case you wanted some head, you could just go ahead and get it in with his hairdo, man. That's how zesty this was. Even Prince was jealous. They they originally had him cast for the role, but it was too zesty. And they gave it to Chris Tucker. They're like, oh, what you doing over there? Yup. They even they put roses around. They they gave him some Bantu knots with roses around his neck. With lipstick on his mouth. And he was sweating and crying and, and singing into the mic. Looking like Ray Jean Rondo. Oh he looked like damn it got some ballers in here tonight. I see Eddie Murphy. I see Richard Pryor. Hey, damn. Which one of these niggas going to pay my bills? He was a futuristic man whore that they was predicting for 2023. And we here, man. And it's a bunch of they You never even seen nothing like this back in the day, but they knew that in the future, it would be men wearing dresses with funny ass dreadlocks looking on. These people is intelligent, man. Cause Nick, people wasn't even wearing their hair like that. But now you go down to Florida, that's all you see. They got AK 47s with dresses on. He had a zesty assistant from Botswana. And I say all that to say, man. Dr. Dre, accusations out the ass about the ass. Chris Tucker didn't want to do another Friday movie because he didn't want to smoke weed anymore. Tupac, the legend, rest in peace. But uh, a picture says a thousand words, man. Mm. Hold on, run that back. I do apologize. Listen to this show. At the California Love video, Dr. Dre, Tupac, Chris Tucker. getting busy. Oh, Chris Tucker in the house. Video by Hype Williams. What's that? Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, man. Face full of makeup, man. <laughs> Look at Tupac. Look at Pac, man. Come on, y'all. Hype Williams directing. We out here. What time is it? Hey. Like four in the morning. I just we caught a, a, I caught a falling star. I just caught a rooster. Oh yeah. And okay. Now this is the thing about it that a lot of people didn't know, and this may be implicated in the Keefe D case if he really want to call out Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, and um, Diddy. Look at this man. talk about it man did dr dre discover burning man now this is the festival that was taking place in the california love video we didn't even know what a burning man was back then but now the world knows that it's a a trippy tricky situation for hollywood elites and other elites man look at this for a festival conceived as a deadiest temporary auto news zone or to non-owners of the atriotic antichrist cookbook the hippy dippy non-hysterical community devoid of structures control burning man has become a very closely endeavor and ayahuasca soap post apocalyptic style playground for the one percent y'all see that shit man they into some other shit some end of the world, world domination, destruction, devil, Satanism shit. So much so to where this man 
would name his record label the aftermath like he can't wait for this shit to be over with hold on y'all for my people out there y'all gotta feel me on this man like that american horror story apocalypse when they was talking about when the world friggin' blow up and there's only a few people left and they, they got to figure out what they got to do. They be living like vampires and shit. This is a fantasy for people. They want. Uh, destruction and shit. And for Dr. Dre to even in the California, what type of California love is it? When y'all talking about blowing up the whole f people living in like Mad Max. And the countdown is, is counting down, man. This is what they want. This is what they plan on. They use this imagery to get you ready for what the fuck about to happen, man. And for Tupac and Dr. Dre to represent the Burning Man Festival, let you know that they thinking that they the elites E-40 and all them other dudes included that was at the video shoot. Feel like we're elite. So when all this shit go down, we going to be living large and y'all going to be out there in the desert. And while y'all out there in the desert, we still going to be calling the shots. When y'all ain't got no toilet paper, no water, y'all need to holla at Pop and Dr. Dre in the post-apocalyptic times. Wicked, wicked, and wicked. Hold on, y'all. Switch it up a little bit. Recently, your boy Justin Timberlake did a similar video in a post apocalyptic time where everything is gone. He named the song Supplies. So when all the shit hit the fan and the world is done and people is ain't no Amazon and all that shit. He made a song talking about how he going to have all the supplies, your, your toothpaste, your toilet paper, whatever you need. He got a pickup truck. He's rich. He been hoarding this shit for years. He got a underground cellar. He got cat. He going to be living large. While the rest of the world is in shambles, but this month he got the supplies. So when people say you need to stock up and bundle up and keep all that shit on deck, you might want to do that because they know it may be something coming down the pipeline. They know like 20 years in advance and y'all out there listening to their music. And when the shit hit the fan, they like, we made all the money we need to survive type of shit. He had a little nappy ass, little na nappy white kids. So, you know, they doing bad if the white kids even got afros. But that's how bad they plan on it being. It's all fucked up. You see the the city all burnt up. And them kids, they hungry. And Justin Timberlake got the supplies. Same thing with the whole Tupac and Dr. Dre video, but the only difference is Tupac didn't survive the aftermath, but Dr. Dre sure did. And it's funny how these subliminals come about. You do a video with Tupac about post-apocalyptic times. Tupac loses his life and you survive through the rubble. So did y'all drag him in just to take a L as a martyr to bring it into the East Coast, West Coast B so much bloodshed, ignorance in the street while they got rich. It was worse than the crack pandemic. But you always got to have a fall guy just like Rick Ross. When they was selling all that dope and they was just giving it to them and spreading it to everybody. But when it was time to put a stop to the trade, they just sacrificed Rick Ross. 
and a whole bunch of other people had to take a L for something they was doing behind the scenes. Tupac had to take the L. They chose him and I believe they chose him collectively and all came to the table and agree that he gonna be the damn martyr. Now they treat him like he's Jesus Christ. They sacrificed this man for hip hop so they can continue to profit off of an industry that is centered around black death. Let's fast forward to 2023 real quick, and I promise we're going to come right back. Is y'all still there? Because y'all need to see how this whole Tupac and all this Dr. Dre and all this shit affect us today, man. Yo, I'm so glad we got all these people in the building. Look at those comments, man. It's going crazy. We got uh, Dadu Math, Mizell Sanders, Davis, Xavier, Jerome in the ha ha house. We got La John, lovely Jesse. How you doing, my love? I see you over there. Damon George, this guy TM. Oh, we doing good in the comment section, man. Apocalyptic Minister is here as well, man. JR, the real Phantom Beats came back. Knock Bundles, Simply Alluring. Yo, we got the whole squad up in here. Maria Phillies is here. Tough Woman, Christopher Knight. Yo, we got to take a trip to modern times real quick so we can come full circle and understand why if Keefe D get to talking about Dr. Dre and Diddy and all that, it could really put a dent in black culture, man. This is where we at now. <clears throat> Female rappers. Booty poppers and twerkers. Women done hijacked black America and claim it is their own. If this is the results in the aftermath of that. But after all we learned tonight, can you blame the women for hijacking hip hop? Come to find out we've been listening to bitches all along. They just didn't want to admit it. Every hot rapper that ever had a hot 16 that was on the radio was a fruit cup. Every last one of them. And I don't mean no disrespect to no hip hop artists. I'm not even trying to call out names, but facts is facts. And these women in the music industry knows this for a fact. And that's what give them the confidence to go out there and do it. Because if these niggas can do it. They definitely can do it. And women feel that way about everything. You got men out here doing weak jobs and dumb shit. Like, fuck it. I'm a better maintenance man than my husband. I might as well be a maintenance woman. Men drop the ball and been doing sucker shit. So they figure, what the hell? You might as well listen to a woman. When you got rappers wearing dresses and they lip gloss popping and booty hanging out, don't nobody want to see that. You better off rocking with Sexy Red or Megan Thee Stallion or somebody. But the reason why these rappers be so zesty is because they following after zesty people. Hold up. I don't even know how to spell a damn Leotar. But I know Tupac had one on. Hold on. I'm gonna say Tupac Waist Trainer. Waist Trainer. Even T.I. was wearing the Waist Trainers. Trying to be like Tupac. He on the red carpet looking like a zesty dominatrix. But figures it was cool since... Tupac did it back in the day. It came all the way up to the nipples. And it was cowboy fitted. Somehow they thought that shit was fly. And not to mention he was with Madonna 
all of them years. So she probably played a part in his expressions and shit. Women had to reclaim their waist trainers, the earrings, the bandanas. Only Big Mama wore a bandana like this back in the day. After a long day of slaving, but these men decided to take Big Mama rag, put on her girdle. They... Women said enough is enough. We about to take our shit back. Y'all zesty rappers been stealing our swag and talking our shit for decades. MOB. That's something that a grandmother would say. Money over bitches. Look, I salute y'all women out there for taking back everything that y'all put out there, man. But you got to figure these men was raised by single mothers. Tupac made a whole album about his mama raising his ass. Oh and his dad was a coward. And if it wasn't for mama and mama, mama shit. Love his mama a little. His mama was his role model. So I'm sure she wore the rag around the house. Rest in peace to Tupac, but let's be real. If that ain't Charlemagne the God, I don't know who it is. You know what? I'm going to quit goofing around and we're going to get into some real stuff, man. Let, let's get into it right now, man. Let's not this, y'all. Yo, Reg, get it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It. Okay, this is it right here. All right, we about to go there, and I don't want to, you know, offend nobody, but we about to go there, and uh, gotta get into it. All right, here we go. Listen at this show. You know what I'm saying? I'm not guilty. People should look me. Oh in my shit! Eyes. Turn that they shit off, me. man. I ain't know it had to. Um, we can't do that with the copyright stuff. Okay, what is this? I'm looking for the um stuff. Y'all gotta bear with me. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. Damn it. Got ads. Y'all stay tuned, man. I appreciate y'all so much. So much love for y'all. Okay, here we go. Amazon link in the description. Braids, so I'm still. Okay, here we go. Listen at this, y'all. I wasn't convicted of no rape charge. My charge was sexual abuse, forcibly touching the buttocks. Still holding me. He still has his hand wrapped around my braids, so I'm still. like stockings which we would call pantyhose back then i had them on and i remember them being ripped off i remember my dress being ripped off I what up though this your boy doc yo man this woman she said some wild stuff about tupac shakur and even big daddy kane says some wild stuff about tupac man so the way he was living with other men was very suspect, man. Hold up. No, 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 no. Hold up. Oh, okay. Listen to this. And shout out to Vlad TV. Shout, shout out to Vlad. Y'all need to listen I to mean, this. I mean, you know, a good battle is great. You know, I mean, that's, you know, part of the origin of hip hop. You know, I mean, you know, the stuff that happened with Cold Crush and Fantastic. You know, there were so many great battles. I mean, in all honesty, I, I think that had um, an event like that happened with Tupac and Biggie, they would have became so rich in one night and probably both, you know, those artists would still be alive today. Sure. Now, you were close to both artists, weren't you? Um, I was probably more closer to Tupac. Um, back when he used to dance for Digital Underground, he used to be on our tour bus a lot. So um, me and Pac have got real cool. And then plus, um, we had reconnected like right before his death because um, Suge, had, it, he, he wanted to sign me to um, Death Row East. So me and Pac have reconnected at that point as well. 
but um, with Big, um, it was really him and Mr. C. They were tight. Um, like once in a blue moon, Mr. C would call me with um, Biggie on a three-way, and we talk on phone. But me and him never really, you know, got that close. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on, man. Is he talking about the same Mr. C <clears throat> that got caught with them gender benders in Brooklyn? Up, y'all. That's him. Mr. C discusses his love for, for oh yeah, for that. <clears throat> yup. So this was Biggie's man's, his, the dude he was running with. This was his people's and Diddy man's as well. He got caught out there. There we go, Big Daddy Kane. That's his man's. Not only was Tupac involved with Madonna, uh, hold up. She had Big Daddy Kane. Oh, what the fuck? This bitch, she all over everybody. What the? She in the studio licking on Nas. They got candles lit. He got on a black leather jacket. She licking all on that man. She had Nelly between her legs. Big Daddy Kane. The black excellence of the 80s and early 90s. Madonna had to have them. He was around them, them weirdos and freaks. With Dennis Rodman and all them other dudes. Look at how homie laid out on the ground for Madonna. She got a certain type of man that she willing to vibe with. And Big Daddy Kane was one of her boy toys. And come to find out he was besties with Mr. C. And Mr. C was Biggie's right hand man's. And Tupac was involved with Madonna too. He on the dinner date, the only black guy in the room. And Sting is cup. How y'all sitting in between Sting? If that's supposed to be your date. Why is he in there with a wife beater on? With his arms around both of y'all. And he the dude that Diddy paying for the rest of his life for the missing you song. So they've been playing niggas like dogs. Tupac look like he in the zestiest conversation he ever had in his life. Like, uh-uh. Said what? Uh-uh. He did what? He look like he about to say, child. Like Tupac. Have you ever had a pedicure? Me a pedicure? Look at my hands. Like, who did your nails? Who did your nails? Like Miranda did my nails. She looked like I got this motherfucker. And Tupac looked like he ready to go home. What the fuck? Come on, man. Let's be real. She looked like she could fry the hell out of some chicken. He got her with the rag on her head with some door knocker earrings on. Pac, you dead wrong for that, bro. And Jada Pinkett, we don't even want to get into her weirdism. It be the women that be turning them out. Quincy Jones' daughter put his hooks in them. And she got Will Smith to sign, LL to sign, fuck it, or oh, LB Shore, everybody signed. Because of Kadada.
Man, I could go on for hours. Um, she ain't even all that cute. Oh my Wasn't she a little bit too young for Tupac? She looked like a child. How old was she when she was messing with Pac? He was 25. She don't look nowhere near 25. She look Aaliyah's age. Yo, we gonna save that for a whole nother Docs Daily, man. Hold up. This is gonna be interesting. Let me type this in real quick. Y'all bear with me. She got to be a crypt keeper in this Hollywood madness, man. Um, there's nowhere she she haven't been. She been with rappers. She been with singers, entertainers, all of that. She's been with Michael Jackson. She been with. Hold on, man. She been with every important black man in the music industry. She had all the zesty men going all the way back to the seventies, y'all. Every zesty man you could think of was willing to be her boy toy. What is the secret? She know how to pull the zestiest of the zesties. And make them her bitch. Oh what what do she do? Like I got a little boy in the back seat, want to go for a ride? He's like, oh goody. Like let's go, let's go. Like uh, Billy's staying tonight, want to come over for popcorn? He's like bitch, close the door, let's go. All right, Mike, I just got to get my keys. I'll be back. Yeah, I swear I'll be back. Let's go see Bobby. What was that all about? Like when I get there, I'm going to give him some candy. I got a Snickers in my back pocket. Can we stop and get him a milkshake? I went and got him a toy. And no disrespect to Michael Jackson. I'm just saying, like, what the fuck is going on, man? Hold up. This is going to be interesting, too. Y'all y'all stay tuned, man. And hit them like buttons. We don't do that girly gossiping and spilling tea. I'm spilling 100 proof Hennessy all over y'all areolas, man. Hold up. Hold on, man. Did she turn him out? Cause it's looking like she probably turned him out and rest in peace to Prince. Oh this nigga look horrible. Who the f this was a bad Halloween decision cause he looked like crap. He really thought he could get away with looking like Prince. Mother, you got a fupa. Man, that better be her son and that better be his grandmama. He, he thought he was, he probably never left the house a day in his life and his first day outside. He came out with a guitar, a Jerry curl wig and a Prince outfit on man. God bless his heart, yo.
the fuck? Now, why they got Raz B set up for failure at such a young age like that, man? Before B2K, this nigga had on a, a prince outfit. Why they do Baby Bash like that? Before his music career could even take off, they got Baby Bash with a prince. His parents ought to be ashamed of themselves, man. Even Bruno Mars, before he became famous, they got pictures of these celebrities, man. Now he doing karate movies, doing his best Bruce Lee impersonations, man. Shouldn't do people kids like that. They made sure he was zesty. No matter what angle he turned, they got Christian Rock son being zesty. I don't know how Blueface gonna feel about his son having on a purple jacket, man. Yo, get them kids off the screen, man. Even Seth Curry was dressed up like Prince for Halloween. But that's Negro here nor there, man. Look, we got some other stuff we got to talk about. I'm so glad y'all kicking it with me in the building. Let me see how y'all doing over there before we continue. Because there's a few more things that we really, really got to talk about. Jonathan Wallace is in the building. Miss Feisty Mitchell. Gage Gore is still kicking it. Um... Bailey Irish Cream is also here. Publish content. Jason Henson, Law Rose. We all good. What it do, T? I see you over there as well. G to God, Cold World Andrew. Oh, we doing good. We got some real heavy hitters in the building tonight, and I want to thank y'all for being here and kicking it with your boy. But we got to get back to what's going on with Dr. Dre. And how people forget that he's the one that was with Easy E when they was doing Ruthless Records. Yeah. The plan was to make millions of dollars exploiting everyday people of color. Plain and simple. Creating a narrative for young black American youth to be locked up at alarming rates. And it worked like a charm, man. Before it was the boy groups like uh, Backstreet Boys and not even Backstreet Boys. What was it? Um, Let's go down memory lane real quick and we're going to come right back. You had groups like this in the 90s. I mean, they was harmless. Nobody's doing a crime. Nobody about to run up in the gas station listening to this shit right here. It's not going to excite a riot. It's not going to make people do something that they know damn well they shouldn't be doing, man. Who the hell? You had R&B groups like this. New Edition, the serenade your girl to death. They'll sing a beautiful ballad for your mama. They not influencing or encouraging nobody to run up in no, no bank or do nothing foolish. People listening to this is not going to jail. They riding down the street in a nice little Cadillac or whatever they got on their way to go get some pussy. <sighs> This ain't going to put nobody in jail. Do y'all get where I'm going with this, man? If you a fan of these dudes, you trying to be out in society. Because there's so many honeys that want to be with your smooth ass. Yeah, this ain't what they was trying to promote. This shit will make a brother get a job and be living like Martin and Gina. Y'all feel me? But when these niggas hit the street, it gave people an excuse 
to be a low life. It gave people an excuse to not be shit. This produced the ain't shit nigga culture that still boils over to today, man. This created so many levels of ignorance for niggas to indulge and then had the nerve to put up a black power fist out of spite. Nevertheless, Hold up. This is what Tupac come up under. The African brothers that got into the music industry to spread a message of peace and history and knowledge and all that good stuff. But the thing about it, it was a fad. They want African Americans to believe that all of your heritage resides in Africa. This is some shit that been going on for a long time. They want to put an official stamp on the African American notion and to get everybody down with the label African American when really it's no such thing, but this type of shit cemented it in the mud to where brothers got a hold of some books and never question who in the hell wrote them books and who in the hell published all of them Afrocentric books. And why would they do it? To create a generation of people willing to accept the fact that they have no heritage, no claim, no nothing to the Americas. And the reason why I'm even bringing this up and the reason why it's important is because Tupac come from under this camp. And when he first started, this was the vibe that he was on. He joined the digital underground, was a part of the Zulu nation and his first introduction to the world. He had on a Kufi, a Daishiki and a whole bunch of other African glitz and glory. So how you go from this brother Shabazz to being the hardest West Coast criminal you ever seen in world history, man. He was the perfect man for the job. And the reason why is because he did a movie that shocked the African American world. It was a film that he took because it was available. And if you know anything about black Hollywood, it's only so many roles you're gonna be able to play. And unfortunately for Tupac, he landed this role. And since he's a hell of an actor, he played the shit out of it. But the problem is people believe the role. He did such a good job. It was like Tony Montana and Scarface. People want Al Pacino to be Scarface. And no matter what Al Pacino do or what movie he take or play, if he ain't playing Scarface no more, people don't want to see it. I mean, people will watch it, but we all would rather see Scarface 24 seven if that's what he could do. If he did a bunch of Cuban movies. Hold on, let's think about this real quick. And we're going to get back to Pac and Juice. A quick little detour. If El Pacino continued his career playing Cuban roles, even if it wasn't Scarface, but just a Cuban, he would be a billionaire. But he didn't want to be typecasted. He didn't want to be stuck in that role, regardless of what the people and the fans wanted. He knew that he always had to be a tough guy, even in public, man. People come to, you know, I am Tony Montana. You don't fuck with me, man. He didn't want to do that. 
Like everywhere I go, I gotta smoke a cigar. People think I sell a drug. They pull me over. They shoot me. If he would have kept that act going, he would have been dead before Tupac. And y'all know it. If El Pacino got so typecasted and fell into this role, he'll be in jail. Unfortunately, Tupac got caught in the damn role. Even in his everyday life. People refused to let him let it go. Once black America likes something, that's it. We don't want it no other type of way. If you taste somebody's good baked chicken or somebody's good cooking, you're not going to want them to change it to nothing else. You want to keep it the way it tasted when you first tasted it. Don't put no cinnamon. Don't add nothing. Make it like that again. That's just how we are, man. Some people don't even like trying new shit. You try to get somebody to try a new vegetable. You might have to fight them to get them to taste it. You try to put somebody onto a new snack. You might have to eat it first. Act like you having a heart attack because it tastes so good in order for them to even give it a try. Y'all know what I'm talking about, man. So for Tupac to play such a hell of a role that people loved, we don't want you with no fucking dashiki on no more. You better not ever grow out no dreads. Don't think you're going to get back to that black bullshit. Because we'd rather see you like this, man. Yo. El Pacino was able to get out alive. But Tupac, on the other hand, man. It was Bishop from then on out. And it wound up costing him his life. That's why actors in Hollywood, once you get started, that's the path you're going to be on for the rest of your life. If you start off a hoe in movies, you're going to be hoeing to the end of Hollywood. And that's what rappers, entertainers will do. However you get in and fit in, that's how you're going to stick. Because as soon as you try to do something different, they're going to call you all types of sellouts. They're going to say you. Hold on, man. Wait a minute. Yo, the same thing with El Pacino and Tupac. If Chris Tucker would have did all of the Friday movies, is Smokey? He would be more known for weed than Snoop Dogg. Oh and he will be stuck as Smokey for the rest of his life. It'll, it'll be nothing he could do. He will have on the same chain, a plain tee and some khakis. And if he ever changed his costume, he would be screwed. He did the right thing. Because they would have typecast his ass forever. And he would be a joke right now as an old ass Smokey on Instagram smoking weed and thank God he didn't do that because this movie already affected enough people man hold up another one one more one more oh this is my favorite right here Th this is my favorite this man is 70 years old Still with the clock. He better never ever show up anywhere without that clock around his neck. Because if he do, can you imagine if he was there without the clock? Security will probably bum rush his ass out there. Like what the fuck is you doing on the red carpet? It's the clock that keep his shit going. Maybe he's smarter than people think. The only way he gonna have time to shine is if he got the clock around his neck. 
He be flossing that shit like it's a, a new Jacob. <laughs> I got the clock on, boy. You can't get in here unless you got one of these. Uh -uh. You know what time it is, boy. Man, if he ain't got a clock handy, he gonna snatch one off the wall. He gonna have to wear that shit till the end of time. They might as well bury him with the clock. Flavor Flame claims that he's on Dr. Dre's new album. Yeah, boy. It's wrong how they do black men in Hollywood. You got to stay that way in order to play. God damn, Taylor Swift really don't look that bad right there. She look like she out of a L'Oreal magazine or some shit. And she had to get a picture with Flav. You know what? S something is up with Flav. I think it's an inside thing that people in Hollywood know about Flav. Specifically that these women know about Flav. I think that Flav, I was about to call him Slaver Slave. I think that Flavor Flav be piping them down. Hitting them with a mean, ugly, long stroke. And that's the reason why they keep him around. He been with a couple of snow bunnies and nobody ever complained about him being with them. And seeing how Taylor Swift is taking pictures to show to her family and friends, he got to be like a porn star. Rodney Jerkins or some shit. She all over. She's swinging that booty all around Black Hollywood. Kanye West called her out and now she thinks she black. If Tupac was alive, he would definitely holler at Taylor Swift. That's Negro here nor there. They freaking love this guy. Like, oh my gosh, it's Flavor Flav. Look at him. He's actually here. It's Flav, everybody. What's up, Flav? Like, you're yeah, here, boy. Cut me a check. Like, oh, no problem. Shit, he like a Hollywood panhandler. They just give him money for the sake of doing it. Like, here you go, Flavor Flav. Yo, this a whole nother Doc's Daily right here, man. Chuck motherfucking D. The hip hop activist. You know, it's different classisms when it comes to brothers in America, man. And Chuck D, in my personal opinion, is a part of the bourgeoisie class that went to college and learned a couple of books from professors about Africans and the brothers and sisters, but live in a friggin' mansion out in the middle of nowhere. I do a little rap for the kids, then I come back to my white wife and I live. That's Negro here nor there, man. Hold on, wait a minute. So Flavor Flav was in the hotel with Tupac and thick 90s chicks? This was 89? And Big Daddy Kane was there. And LL and Flavor Flav, Chuck D and Big Daddy Kane was there. And Tupac was there as well? With an Al B. Shore poster in the back. Al B. Shore was with Quincy Jones. LL was with Quincy Jones and Big Daddy Kane was with Madonna. So basically, if you want to be a black entertainer, that mean you got to be a male whore? 
and this is all alleged allegations and speculation. These some powerful people. No, he ain't trying to do the black to back the black power shit with KRS one. They'll do anything for a check. If they paying you to be conscious, they going to get that conscious check. If they paying you to be gangster, they going to get that gangster check. If they paying you to be Z, the only reason why these dudes was wearing beads and bangles and medallions is because it was a check out there for that. There was record labels trying to promote that shit just to give off the back to Africa agenda so people wouldn't try to take no inheritance in America. Hold on, man. Wait a minute. Let me let me pull this up real quick. Oh my god, man. I gotta take a breather. Okay, KRS one. Ain't this the same dude that defended friggin' um Africa Bambadas? MC Shan Blast carries one for defending Africa Bambada in the midst of the child molestations. He trying to explain how it was all right for Bam, one of the found, founding founders of hip hop on his Afro-American tip. And it make you wonder, Africa Bambada is the furthest thing from a conscious brother ever. But like I said, back then, they was paying people to be Afrocentric with the Egypts and the Hebrews and just to keep your ass from thinking about America. Like maybe you will want to go back to Africa once you get all this knowledge. They was promoting that. The furthest thing from that. It's all about what they paying you to do. If you go to labor ready or some shit and you trying to get paid, you got to take what's available to you. And for KRS-One, he came in in the time so they would give you a bag for that. If he would have came in the game about 10 years later from what he did, he would probably be the worst gangster rapper you ever seen in your life for a check. That's a whole nother Docs Daily. But anyway, I know people came here to hear about what's going on with uh, Dr. Dre and Diddy. Basically, the founders of the East Coast and West Coast beef are about to fry. Because Keefe D is the final link to what happened with Biggie and Tupac. Dr. Dre is not generating no money for nobody. He's sitting on his money. And how long do you think they're going to be able to let him sit on his money without releasing an album? And like, when the last time he released the album? What up? And everything that I'm saying is alleged allegations. I don't, I just be talking. Dr. Dre sells beats for $3 billion. Okay. Wow. Hey. Money talks and bullshit walks. And Dre is in pocket with some very wealthy people. If it ain't Eminem, it's somebody else he's sitting with. He's the no niggas own. Not a one. Can you blame him? He been around niggas his whole career. Almost got shot in the ass. Suge Knight banging his baby mama. I think Dr. Dre, he done with nukes. Like, I do better with my new friends. Do y'all see the zest? If that ain't Tariq Nasheed, it gotta be Dr. Dre. And shout out to Tariq Nasheed, man. 
even got a, a Hawaiian man on the side board. Whatever happened to DLC? No wonder he can't put no album out. But sure, let's do another country song. Fuck it, man. Let's do another one of them, man. Oh like that, we got the country charts on lock. If we told them Dr. Dre was making this music, they wouldn't even buy this shit. They got to keep it a secret that Dr. Dre is making all the country music. Because they will snatch the radios out of their car if they knew it was from him. Like the, the, the NWA? Oh, hell no, Bobby. If you don't turn that shit off in my pickup truck, motherfucker. I ain't listening to that old country fried shit. They had to keep it a secret because he damn sure ain't putting on no black music. He got Katy Perry going platinum. Britney Spears got a secret album in the works. And guess who's the producer, man? They got rid of Suge. Not only did they get rid of Suge, he's out the picture. Because y'all got to remember, Jimmy Iovine had a deal going with Dr. Dre and Suge. And you figure he liked Dr. Dre a whole lot more than he liked Suge. The only way we can get from under this contract with this motherfucker is if we get rid of that damn Suge Knight. But what about Tupac? Tupac already said that I've been taking it up the butt. Tupac told all the people that listen to this genre of music that I'm a, a, a whole cake. The only way we can secure the bag, that motherfucker is dead and Suge Knight is in jail. And the reason why they couldn't kill off Suge is because them West Coast gangsters would have been all over Dr. Dre's ass. If Suge wasn't there to hold him back. And the only way they could get Suge to hold back the gangsters is if they dangled a carrot in his face. Like you're still the CEO of death row. Even though it's burnt to shit, you still get to hold the title. And as soon as Suge went to jail for what it looks like to be the rest of his life, Snoop Dogg swooped in and took over death row records, man. But what he not knowing is that the people in power look at death row records like it's something to be claimed, man. He got a bounty on his head, but Snoop Dogg is generating a lot of money. So they gonna let him make as much money as he possibly can make. Then they gonna hit him with all different types of sexual allegations. The empire made to crumble. This is basically the Western conference and bad boy is basically the Eastern conference. And when Kobe, I mean, Tupac got traded to the Lakers. That's when all hell broke loose. Hold up. People been confused for years about did Tupac really die? There is no funeral. There is no body. Did Tupac live? Well, legend has it. Tupac was able to play a whole league in the NBA. Undetected, unsuspected, and prospered. Kobe Bryant entered the WNBA in 1996, if if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research because I don't want to give you all no false information. Basically, they trying to say that he's Tupac. Hold on, Kobe. Bryant. Enter. NBA. We about to uh, figure this out. Y'all stay tuned. Oh shit. Oh, shut the front door. Oh my God. Oh my mo. 
Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Hold on, y'all. Year Tupac. I'm over here freaking out. My hands is freaking trembling right now. Oh. What? K Kobe. So you mean to tell me that the same year Tupac Shakur died and nobody seen his body and nobody know what the fuck is the same year Kobe Bryant got drafted into the NBA. Hold up. It's a possibility that allegedly Tupac Shakur and Kobe Bryant is the same exact person, man, with a little bit of plastic surgery. And didn't Kobe Bryant have an album and he was rapping with Shaq? Hold on. Kobe. And he continued his rap career. Oh, you think you slick. You think he's slick. He don't wiggle the way into the NBA. Don't play like 20 seasons, won five championships and still was putting out albums. The same tattoos. And don't LeBron got that same tattoo on his arm. He covered up the Jesus tattoo with a Moses tattoo. Yo, rest in peace to Kobe. Didn't he have the seven day theory? The Illuminati, and on the eighth day, he would be balling. Oh it's all starting to make sense, man. Y'all got to let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section. There's a few more things I want to share with y'all. These conspiracies is getting real deep. And I started to worry about the people in power watching this type of stuff. And they don't want me giving y'all this information like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch it up real quick because I ain't trying to have them people at me again. So let's listen at this, y'all. Hold on. Get that set up. What was Tupac issue with LL Cool J? We seen LL though, right? Right at the last, like the week before Pac died, he we seen him. He was like he he was like, you know what I mean? We was at the MTV Awards, and Suge and Pac. I remember walking in, and Suge and Pac and him was sitting somewhere, and I was like, "Where's my seat?" And they was like, "You got to sit over there." And LL was just like he was he was paying attention to everybody who was walking with us, and he was respectful. He spoke to everybody. He was respectful. He spoke to Pac and Suge. You know what I mean? So I really don't know the. I, I really can't recall why why Pac um, started doing songs against LL. But um, like I said, a lot of times the East Coast rappers was doing. They were saying subliminal stuff in their raps. You know what I mean? And I think even in that Who Shot You, he might have came out of Ice T. He might have said some slick stuff against Ice T. Pac was just like that, man. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it had nothing to do with Kadada Jones, right? Nah, it it wasn't that against Kadada Jones because of course we know I I think they had some type of relationship before Pac, but that was years ago. You know what I mean? Pac wasn't that type of person that he's gonna start, you know, attacking his fiance exes and stuff like that. No, because you know that was in the past. It definitely wasn't because of that. What was Tupac issue with Ice Cube? I I never heard it. I know I know one time me being a hothead. It was a chance that I was going to be on a song with Ice Cube and I ruined it because um, after Pac died, Cube was doing a lot of songs. And, and, and Cube at that time, he was like, I grew up listening to Ice Cube. He was like my favorite rapper. You know what I mean? Him and Pac. So, but after Pac died, I remember he used to say a lot of stuff about West Coast this, he's the West Coast Don. And 
my mindset at that particular time because I was so immature and irrational and and and, and just um explosive. I used to listen to Cube saying that he's the West Coast Don and he's this and this and I thought he was this and Pac. So one day a friend of mine, his name is um I think his name is One Eye. He used to produce for um for for Cube. And he also used to produce I had a group that I was trying to put out from Irvington back in the day called the um Okay, the only reason why I play him is to let y'all know that once upon a time, Tupac had a beef with Ice Cube. And the reason why he had a beef with Cube is because he felt like Cube wasn't keeping it real when he started the West Side Connection. What up? But... What Pac wasn't understanding was the beef was created so everybody can eat. He thought that the beef was really real. Like Ice Cube wasn't doing songs with Public Enemy back in the day. And the Bomb Squad wasn't his producers. Some big time East Coast producers. So Cube wasn't really tripping off no East Coast, West Coast madness. But to make a dollar... Hell yeah. Dub C and Mac 10 ain't backing down nobody. Some studio gangsters that made a whole album, a one crip, one blood, and he neutral as fuck in the middle. Connecting the, the east side, they got a map out. For all the people on the west side of town to rise up and it was some clown shit. And Tupac called them out for it. But he figured, hell, if we all making money, we making money. What's the big deal? The sad part about it is before Pac passed away, he started to get a clear understanding of the foolishness that he was putting out there while everybody else was laughing to the bank and he had enough. He didn't know how much longer he was going to be able to do it. He missed them days when he could put on a wig and a blouse and some pantyhose with the um digital underground. My man got the Kango like strong J. This dude doing interviews all day talking about what Tupac was thinking. Even Ice Cube look unimpressed with this entourage. <laughs> Cube is not pleased with none of this shit going on with the digital underground, man. And not only did Tupac have on the wig with the titty meat hanging out. Like this shit ain't gangster, man. Hold on. Q being a family man. And Tupac is at the party. How come Pac was never dressed for the occasion? I don't think he had money like that. And no disrespect to Pac. So much death and connection with everybody in the music industry, man. It's an evil spirit that lurks in the shadows. They put something over themselves that's so sinister. It's a vicious cycle. For the people that don't think the devil is real, man. They say money is the root of all evil. The things people to do. Well, I don't even want to get started on EZ. If you want to talk about EZ, you got to talk about pentagrams and crucifixes and Ouija boards and shit. And I don't want to go that route. It's Halloween. Matter of fact, I'm going to wait till Halloween night and do an EZ video. It's going to be this. <laughs> it's going to be this. 
going to be the scariest shit you ever. You better off watching Friday the 13th or something like that. Because once I pull out them easy E documentations, your head going to start spinning. The exorcist going to have to come over with a machine gun just to save your soul, man. We got to catch up to the times. Wait until Jay-Z get back in the news. I got a whole bunch of information on him. Nas and Tupac hugged up at the party back in the day. You just never know what that was. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Nas looking all like Will Smith in the face. Who knows what his story is before he got famous? He probably was a break dancer like Ice-T. I could see him pop blocking on some cardboard boxes in Queens. But that's Negro here nor there, man. Yo, for all the people watching, I would really appreciate it if y'all hit that like button and also hit the notification button so y'all know the next time I go live. And for the people leaving comments, man, I gotta let y'all know that I really do appreciate y'all for holding it down. I can't even, I'm getting dizzy looking at all these comments, man. People showing me so much love out here, yo. Where do I start? This is the most beautiful thing I've seen in a long time. It's sort of like looking at a lava lamp or something. JP, what is up? Daughter of Eve and hater of Lilith is also here. DTV. Bailey's is kicking it. Kevin KP or KB is here. 12. What's up? Sony made for PS4. Step your game up, mate. Troy is here. Tiana Ramsey. This guy, TM. Okay. Look, man, every last one of y'all get none but love. Doria Dubalak is here as well. We all in good spirits. We all in a good mood. We all kicking it. Turi S is also here, man. So for all of y'all, that's in the building. All the people that hit the like button. Tanya C. Hollywood News. Shine Carter. We rolling. But let me wrap this up real quick. And give you all a little more information before I get out of here. Listen. Sure. Sure. What do you think was your most memorable Tupac story? Or your, your craziest Tupac story? Let me see. This was um, the Public Enemy Bring the Noise tour. I believe. Um, we were in um, San Diego. And again, you know, this is before Pac was Pac. So, you know, don't, don't, don't make it sound like he needed my help. This is when he was still dancing for digital. He wasn't Tupac, the superstar then. Um, uh, you know, him, Money, B, and them, they came and got, got me um, from out of my room and said they had, you know, a girl in the room and, you know, they was trying to get it popping. And, um, when I came in the room, um, you know, they was wild and, you know, they was in there drinking liquor and, you know, you know, being real aggressive. One dude jumping up and down on the bed with his yam out. And, and I'm like, you know, all oh, these dudes is wild. Wait a minute, man. Hold on. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's get this together. Hold up, bro. So. <clears throat> so they was in a bed together. And needed to go get Big Daddy Kane to help them with a chick. They in the room acting like some chimpanzees. They jumping up and down the bed on the bed with they meat hanging out. Yeah. Big Daddy Kane walk in there like, y'all boys don't know nothing about no pussy. The girl in the corner freaking out. They've been trying to get her to pull down them drawers for an hour. Two hours pass, and then they come up with the bright idea. How about we go over to Big Daddy Kane's room, and he can show us how it's done. They didn't know how to work a groupie. They was being too aggressive. Too excited. Money B knew about Tupac's sex tape. Probably because he was the one holding the camera. He's Nick. 
the zest was about them everywhere they went. Queen Latifah took it. You already know what time it is with Queen Latifah. Man. Okay, go on. Just play the clip, bro. They had to go get Big Daddy Kane to show them how it's done. Listen to this. But me and him never really, you know, got that close. Sure. Sure. What do you think was your most memorable Tupac story or your, your craziest Tupac story? Let me see. This was um, the Public Enemy Bring the Noise tour, I believe. Um, we were in um, San Diego. And again, you know, this is before Pac was Pac. So, you know, don't, don't, don't make it sound like he needed my help. This is when he was still dancing for digital. He wasn't Tupac, the superstar then. Um, uh, you know, him, money, B, and them, they came and got, got me um, from out of my room and said they had, you know, a girl in the room and, you know, they was trying to get it popping. And um, when I came in the room, um, you know, they was wild. Like, you know, they was in there drinking liquor and, you know, you know, being real aggressive. One dude jumping up and down on the bed with his yam out. And, and I'm like, you know, all oh, these dudes is wilding. So I told him, like, try to calm it down. And, you know, Pac was with me um, on this, but um, I guess, you know, the cast day room was just a little too reckless. Hell no, turn that shit so, off. So, um, and I could see the girl was uncomfortable and I'm like trying to explain, man, you know, this can turn into a rape charge. You know, y'all need to chill. So anyway, I asked him, I said, well, look, leave me in here with the girl and um, let me holler at her first and um, I'll call you back in. But um, by that time, I don't know, I, don't know, I, I guess Pocket done not, had left by then. I guess I must each had to go get some, somebody else or something. So I just, you know, I just, like, when they left out, I just locked the door and, um, you know, I knocked it down and then I just bounced and, you know, told him, nah, she ain't doing nothing. And what happened? And I wonder how old that girl was, man. Hey, I understand they get wild backstage and there's groupies all over the place, but <sighs> that was back in the day. I'm pretty sure it's still going on now. But as far as Dr. Dre and Tupac and him trying to get Pac up out the picture, because Pac was damn sure trying to get him up out the picture before Tupac came to death row. They had some unity. They had an understanding. Yeah. Before Pac got there, man, they was really making moves. He caused the division. He outcasted Snoop. He outcasted Dr. Dre. He was the only one left. Everybody else was gone. But the thing is, they had money and interest tied into the company. Snoop didn't have no other options and neither did Dr. Dre. And if this is the man, the king of the West Coast, and he talking bad about you, your shit is done. He talking bad about Dre, whoever he's going at, the fans is going to side with Pac. So he had to go. You're not going to come in our territory. Take over our shit that we built. We had this thing up and running before you even got out of jail. And we the ones that sent for you to come to our label. He came in a house, took a shit and bit the hands that was feeding them. And I'm pretty sure that's why what happened on the East Coast happened as well. It was all messy, but he's out of the picture. Snoop Dogg is doing amazing. Dr. Dre is still rolling and riding high. Ain't got a nigga in sight. What up, Dr. Dre? All he needs is Eminem. 
Eminem ain't never gave him no trouble, no drama. All Eminem did for Dr. Dre was put a big old wad of money in his pocket, man. And that's the reason why he not trying to really deal with nobody, especially no gangster artist. Can you blame him? I don't know, man. I want to share this with y'all before I get out of here, though. Because the album he put out after Death Row was... It was booty. But he was trying to go in another direction. And it just wasn't working, man. Fans want what they want. If it ain't Tupac, we ain't trying to hear it. It was a dark phase for him. And the only way he could get in good graces with anybody... The black community was done with Dr. Dre. After Tupac made those allegations. So he had to find a whole nother community that would embrace him and accept him for whatever it is he do, man. Hold on. Somebody don't donate five dollars. Tracy S. She said clones or robotic like MK mind control height is a factor between Bieber, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Britney, Jamie Foxx and more clones. So you trying to say they all the same height? I never picked up on that before. Miss Boo Boo, what do you do, beautiful? With it? God Almighty, Miss Boo Boo. Mm. Simply amazing. And JP, we're, we got supermodels in the comment section. This is something I ain't never seen before, man. I'm so glad y'all here. And Tracy S looking like a younger version of Cameron Diaz. Man, Doria, is that Amber Rose? It's some for some fine women in here tonight, man. I just want April is here as well. Somebody must have told the A-listers in Hollywood about my channel because every time I look in the comment section, it's another beauty. I think I seen her in the movie I was watching last night. We got celebrities in here. Michael, she was in that Tyler Perry movie. In the chick, that's the girl that be with Monique. Sherry, that's Charleston White's big sister, man. Nita Sheree. Oh my God. I'm blushing. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to be able to continue the show. It's just, I mean, I'm, I'm y'all. Wow. I've never seen this many beautiful women in my life, man. And I've been to a lot of places. I've been to beauty pageants. I went to a couple of horror shows and I ain't never seen this much beauty, man. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm over here in tears. I would finish the video, but I can't even see the screen because I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit. I got so much love for y'all, man. And I want to thank everybody that hit that like button. Also, for the people that hit that cash app as well. Let me see if anybody hit that cash app real quick. Because I got to show y'all some love, man. Um, Rosa Johnson, Dimitri Bright, and Antonio Hill. And don't forget about Humble Waters. I appreciate y'all so much. I'm going to holla at y'all on the next video. I risk my mother life. I, 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 I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I risk my life to give you documentations. Girl, I risk my life to give you documentation, girl. I Sean got the jocks. I'm keeping it funky like.